Season 4 of The Boys detonates with a bang between soups and humanity. Homelander is showing no signs of stopping, doing whatever it takes to influence his frenzy followers and tighten his grip on power. Right behind the scenes, the equally evil and conniving Victoria Newman is only a few steps closer to massive political influence, but not until the boys get to them first. Unapologetically bold and uncompromising, the boys continues its relentless mission to expose the sinister underbelly of Vaught, the very corporate machine that has concealed the crimes of their superheroes. Offering a gritty showdown of power and principle, the legacy of the boys continues with season 5, confirmed to be underway. With every minute that goes by, the boys implores us to set aside reason in order to enjoy the savage satire and heartfelt punches hidden within. In a world where bizarre and graphic events occur on a regular basis, rational thinking is not applicable. When it comes to overpowering us, the program sets the bar higher for itself. A train smashing into and destroying Huey's girlfriend, as well as whatever Homelander is doing at all times, are examples of gory scenes that could detract from the show's meticulously developed history. It's coherent because there's a kind of continuity, even in strange environments. The boys flirts heavily, again, with it in their strangely hilarious song, Beware the Jabberwock, My Son. Not only because the antagonists of the hour are flying, homicidal farm animals that screech, though that entire chase is incredibly strange, I mean weird. It makes sense to assume that different animals are given injections of Compound V. Recall the hamster from Season 3? It is therefore not surprising that Victoria Newman runs a covert lab where her ex-boyfriend conducts research using the virus that kills Super V. Together with the boys, who have broken into Victoria's shed to take the virus, the infected cattle goes rogue and tries to devour her. At least Butcher and M.M. persuade the crew that it's better off in their hands than in Vic's. As soon as the boys and Stan Edgar break inside the shed, she threatens to blow them up. Victoria's decision to spare the animals pursuing them later is therefore absurd. It's difficult to imagine Homelander wouldn't just set the insane sheep on fire, much like in Episode 3, when she easily could have lasered Huey. Girl, make use of your abilities. Rather, everyone frantically attempts to outpace chicks, sheep, and buffaloes with superpowers. Because the Butcher, M.M., Stan, and Frenchie are just regular people, it's funny to see them struggle. However, one would expect that as Soups, Kamiko, Starlight, and Victoria would take action. However, no. Conveniently, Starlight's powers are waning. The unkillable Kimiko doesn't put up much of a fight. What justification has Victoria? She had already set fire to at least one animal to save her stepfather, Stan, the former CEO of Vaught, from a temporary prison sentence. The other flying animals might also be destroyed by her. The boys now seem ridiculous because of this dumbing down of Soup's abilities to explain why Butcher only informed his crew about the virus. No solid explanation exists either, so we can only presume that his health problems caused him to slow down. However, what became of the notion that one should be afraid of Victoria et al's powers or character development? Let's contrast this with the Season 2 climax, in which Queen Maeve, Kimiko, and Starlight team up to overcome the formidable Stormfront. There, the buildup paid off. For the purpose of superficial shock value, the boy seems to be altering its established narrative. Fun fact, beware of the Jabberwock, my son. It's also vain in a way I can't justify, which is a rising theme in Season 4 of a program I normally love but it will add to the ever-growing list of the most absurd moments of the show. They are insane and desperate, is where we are, Butcher tells Annie at one point in the episode. This feeling also applies to the boys. Huey's jaw-dropping encounter, at least, sets the stage for something historic, specifically, something horrifying. The nightmare that ensues from Daphne giving a dose of Compound V to the dying Huey Sr., it enables Peg to exit his farewell episode in style. I never thought I would cry in the boys, but Peg shows Huey Sr. a great level of vulnerability as he deals with the consequences of turning into a soup and finally accepting death. He is the steady but brutal grounding. Before his power manifests, Huey Sr. appears to be fine after emerging from his coma. It seems right out of the Shadowcat playbook of the X-Men. He has the ability to phase through solid objects, even human bodies, as graphically shown. It's a horrifying sight to watch as he blithely strolls past gullible patients in the hospital hallways, emerging on the other side, clutching their organs, perplexed as to why he's become a murdering machine. When Huey Sr. agitates a patient's internal organs, as if he were an electric mixer, it leaves no room for interpretation, a sight I will do my best to ignore. For such a sweet, sweet man, the journey is so terrible. 
However, this terrible incident also makes Huey and the rest of us face the reality of mortality in the boys. Because there is so much mortality in this Wild West, especially around Huey, our claim point of view, we are desensitized to it. But he's lost and hasn't found his purpose after fighting soups, being attacked by them, and doing crimes himself. As his father notes, Huey is easily swayed and has a tendency to clutch onto things strongly. I was glad of Huey's development when, in a heartfelt sequence involving Daphne and the two of them, he compassionately takes his father's life because season 4 doesn't know what to do with him longer. Look, the boys know how to combine catharsis with carnage. This year, the show has been lacking that. It takes stories straight out of the headlines rather than making fun of them. Take a look at how Firecracker, posing as Marjorie Taylor Greene, continues to criticize Starlight's abortion on a conservative network. It's distressing, to put it mildly, to watch it on the second anniversary of the tragic decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Boys is parodying actual events while maintaining a satirical tone, which only serves to highlight how stale the content is. In the meantime, the V52 Expo, which seems to have taken place in a different reality, provides ample opportunity for ridiculing both our infatuation with Comic-Con and Marvel DC's yearly showcase of their copious programming. It serves as a useful reminder that corporations exist only to feed our insatiable appetite for content, regardless of quality. Channeling Kevin Feige, deep and right-wing journalist Cameron Coleman reveal on stage, listing franchises including a Trains films, Gen V's Kate and Sam in a gender flip series, and Deep getting his own Aquaman. Vought 2 has multiple phases planned. But Ryan isn't exactly excited about being the host of his TV program. You can't blame him. Super school is a corny term. He informs his father, Homelander, that he can utilize his skills for good and doesn't need to waste time on imaginary saves. Following his murderous rampage last week, Homelander is, for the most part, calm and supportive of his teenage son's ambitions. Alternatively, we believe. In the end, he uses deceit to get Ryan to punish director Adam Borg, who is abusing his female assistant. Okay, so this isn't the worst thing he's ever done. But it's not good for Adam when Homelander and Ryan are smirking while they sip on their drinks while Adam is smacked. Billy Butcher, you have to save Ryan immediately. When his scheme to steal the soup-killing virus fails, our favorite Kiwi has a fallback. Big Sack Samir is someone he has abducted and knows how to make it again. As most of you expected, Butcher smirks a lot at this plan and shares it with Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character, Joe Kessler, who is undoubtedly a figment of his brain injury. Why Billy is seeing him in his mind instead of his deceased younger brother Lenny intrigues me. Hopefully, the boys respond to our message before the season ends.